You're listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. That's me, your naturally platinum blonde pop culture connoisseur. I'm the reality TV junkie, self-improvement addict, and host with only the hottest tea spilled fresh weekly. For more hot takes, go and give me a follow at Just Plain Zach. I always keep it funny and I always keep it cute. I've been keeping it real cute lately. If you're like me and you want to stay up to date with the latest reality tea, give us a follow at No Filter with Zach on the Instagram, or you can always join our private Facebook group. The link is in the description below. Lots and lots of tea to be spilling today, but I will say this. If you are listening to this on iTunes or Spotify or wherever you listen to the audio, that's great. But today's episode, you're probably going to want to go to YouTube for because I got a, a hunk of hunk of burning love that's on the show today. Uh, he, he's doing a little, a little fun calling to chat with me about Real Housewives of Dallas. And he's very easy on the eyes. So you're not going to want to miss that. But we are breaking down. We have a lot to break down on the show this week. We have I have some insider Real Housewives of Beverly Hills tea. I have some updates on All Stars. We've been seeing some of the housewives spotted out in some of the same areas. Areas. There was also some beef between Lisa Vanderpump and Kelly Dodd. Kelly Dodd is coming for Lisa Vanderpump. And she's like, uh-uh, no way, girl. We're in, we ain't going to do that right now. You ain't going to drag me, um, which we will be breaking all down. But I just have to say that, you know, I do have a very special guest that we'll be chatting with very shortly. But don't forget, this Thursday, 5.30 Pacific, 8.30 Eastern, I'm going to be live on the No Filter with Zach Instagram account and on YouTube, youtube.com slash Zach. So you're going to want to stay tuned. Grab a drink. I don't know if I'm going to be doing vodka or wine, but let's grab a drink this Thursday night. We're going live. Let's have a drink. Let's gab about Real Housewives of New Jersey. Maybe we'll talk about Summer House. Summer House has been very interesting. Also, I've gotten some DMs lately about Brandy Redman from Real Housewives of Dallas and about Evan and Jackie from Real Housewives of New Jersey. Apparently, one person said that she's been hearing about the Evan rumors since Jackie's first season on the show and that it's kind of just common knowledge in Jersey. And then in terms of Brandy Redman, we broke that there was um, there were rumors that she was having an affair with the country music singer. I've had people that are close to him reach out to me and say that apparently he's like a big philanderer and flirt, and that's why he and his wife moved out of Dallas, um, or or, sorry, moved out of Nashville, and apparently, I don't know, things are getting spicy in both of those areas, but there's not enough tea or receipts, so if anybody out there has any more inside dish you want to DM me, send it over to me so that we can fully investigate and see where it goes from here. But like I said, there's a lot of tea to break down, and I have a very special guest. All right, so I am sitting today with, uh, you may remember him from the new season of The Real Housewives of Dallas. Cam has a little pup, and the little pup's name is Fancy, and Fancy has a very hunky dog trainer that's on the show today. (laughs) Everybody was tweeting about him and Instagramming about him, so I was like, he needs to come on the show. So please welcome Brad Bevel. How you doing, Brad? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Have your DMs been like flooded with messages from people after seeing you on the show? Because I know I was watching the show and I was like, I'm not a dog, but I think I need some training. (laughs) I appreciate that. Um, Yeah, let's just say we've had some fun. Me and my wife, she'll I don't I don't get on Twitter really ever, Um, but she'll be going through Twitter just reading to me like, oh, this person wants you to train them and this person wants to ride your face. and Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, that wasn't like, me. I maybe sent the first tweet, but I didn't send the second one. <laughs> it's like some of the most ridiculous but hilarious tweets. It's how, been fun. It's been a lot of fun. How did she respond to it? Um, the, the positive stuff, I usually just like, say thank you, whatever. The negative stuff, I always respond with, I totally agree. You're right. <laughs> That's how just, does, that's how I do it. Is she like ready to fight with people on Twitter that are trying to come for her man, your wife? No, she's good. She's been such a good sport about it. Um, she's uh, she's a wonderful person and and supportive and trusting and all that stuff. So it's been fun. And, you know, honestly, like there's been, I would say it's probably 60, 40 men over women. So she's had a lot of fun with that too. <laughs> um, so has your, your phone been buzzing or other housewives signing up to get training? Cause they, it's. Yeah. You know, we, um, Obviously, Cameron has been amazing and and has really sort of opened up our world, and we really appreciate her for that. But yeah, we also have worked with Carrie Duber and um, 
I actually have Mama D's puppy here right now as I'm talking. Wow. Um, Bronwyn Burke out in LA, I'm working with her right now too. So yeah, there's been there's kind of been several. It's been it's been a lot of fun. Do you have a preference, OC or Dallas? Are you a Housewives fan? So crazy enough, as a punk rocker musician who you know is anti all things that are popular <laughs> in general, um, I started watching Real Housewives in Orange County the first season. Really, I did. Yep. I watched Real Housewives of Orange County first season and I watched it for years um, until I think my career just got too busy and, you know, TV is not really a big part of my day anymore. But uh, believe it or not, I am a fan of the franchise. Um, once it started getting Atlanta and, you know, Salt Lake City and all these other cities, it was a little bit hard to keep up. But I loved those first few seasons of Orange County. I, I truly, really liked it. I think I think you could train Vicky a little bit. She needs she could use <laughs> I like Vicky. Vicky's a control freak. I like that part about her. So we just need to take that that part of her uh, personality and kind of like, you know, uh, direct it into healthy ways to be controlling, right? Okay. So how different are people and dogs? Like cuz I feel like people like dogs like are they easy to train? Is that a weird question? Like cuz I I feel dogs. like you can apply certain like training tools to help like some people kind of emotionally get their shit together. I e Vicky. Dogs are very simple. So here's, what's beautiful about dogs. Dogs do not lie to you. Um, their energy and their body language and their behavior are all exactly aligned to how they're feeling. Mm. Human beings can feel one way and act another. Mm hmm. If you're really good at reading energy and body language, you know when someone's being dishonest about how they feel, right? Dogs are simple. They never, ever, ever, ever lie to you. And the formula for fixing behavioral issues is really simple. Hard to, to execute, but simple to understand from, from a conceptual perspective, right? Um, so to answer your question, yeah, I mean, there's, there's different angles I could go with this, but the bottom line is I'm a, I'm a human therapist. The dogs are easy. Like if you see fancy, <laughs> you see fancy in my presence and then fancy at home, she's two different, two different dogs, but all she's doing is responding to the environmental information that's being given. Right. So if she's being given, Oh my God, oh my God oh, yeah. you up again. Oh my God. then she's going to be yeah. like that. When uncle Brad walks in, she knows. Yeah. What do you What do you want? Uncle I feel Brad, like I feel like know? most people get like that when Uncle Brad walks in the room, though. That's probably how <laughs> you landed your wife, right? So yeah, it's uh, it's just animals can only respond to the environment. That's all they can do, and they're super simple beings. And humans are just so much more complex. But ultimately, if I can't get the human, and Cam has done a wonderful job. I mean, given how busy she is, and the two kids, and and you know her career and then the, the dog food company and all this. I mean, she has a lot going on. She's done a really fantastic job, um, you know, following through uh, as best she can given her circumstances. But the bottom line is animals will never not respond to the environmental information they're receiving. So it doesn't matter how good I am with the dog. It's not my dog. Right. My job is to train the human to create an environment where that dog can thrive. That's interesting because I think we think of like when you send your dog to a trainer, they're going to learn all the tools and then they're com they're going to come back and they're going to be, you know, a perfect little pup that's just going to always obey and listen. And then when they don't, right. we often want to blame the trainer as like, oh, well, you didn't do your job. But I guess it's like you that's said, right. like therapy where you can go to a therapist every week for five years. But if you're not practicing the tools outside of therapy, then what good is that? You that's can't right. blame the therapist. I'm your personal trainer. I'm your nutritionist. Here's what to eat. Here's how many times to work out, how long and what exercises to do. You either do it or you don't do it, but I can't give you the body. So I can't give you the body. I think a lot of ladies on Twitter would want you to give them the body though, Brad. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> um, you set me up that for that one. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, how is Cam and Fancy doing? How are they doing? They're doing great. Is yeah, Fancy doing great. behaving? She was just here. Yeah, she's doing awesome. So uh, Cam and her family were just at Disney World um, and Fancy was here for the duration of that trip. 
she did fantastic. So she's really starting to mature. She's out, believe it or not, with 20, 25 dogs a day, pit bulls, great Danes. It doesn't matter. She's out with them, socializing with them. Um, she's starting to mature socially. She's doing a, a fantastic job. You know, the, their house is a little bit more elevated than the environment that we create here at Bevel Dog right. Behavior. So at home, she's a little bit more amped. Um, but uh, she, in terms of her uh, academic knowledge, she's brilliant. I mean, she's a wonderful dog. She does whatever it is you ask. You just have to ask it of her. There's a bunch of footage that got caught out, uh, cut out of episode five where I did a follow-up. And it was real. I wish they would have showed it. It was hilarious because, you know, Cam's trying to get her not to eat a treat. So she puts the treat down on Fancy's bed and Fancy <laughs> eats it. And she's like, ah, I'm like, all right, Cam, let's do it again. You got to, you know, you got to control space. So she yeah. has to stay calm. She can't come towards the food. She do it. Again. <laughs> Fancy eats it. So it just kept happening over. And I was like, here, all right, let me show you. So I put the food down. Fancy backs up and lays it down. Just looks at me. All right, Fancy, you can have it. And she, crawls to it, eats it real polite, you know? So it's, it's so relational. It's like you have had to have had relationships where uh, somebody thought you were an asshole or you thought they were an asshole. Oh, but that's, then they all found, of, that's all my YouTube comments. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Perfect. But then you found a new relationship or they found a new relationship and all of a sudden they're the best thing in the world. You're the best thing in the world. Right. That's called uh, compatibility. Right. And sometimes depending on where we are in life, what we're going through, how we're feeling, who we're with, we are, it drives our behaviors. And sometimes those behaviors are always behaviors that, that we're proud of, or that who really represent who we are at a core. Right. And it's the same with dogs, um, the, that environment, who they're around, the relationships they have, uh, drive behaviors that are either going to be positive or viewed as negative. Right. And so the more we can build a solid, trusting, respectful relationship with our dog and the more we can create an environment for them to thrive, the more we're going to enjoy their behavior. And I'm not talking, you know, you said earlier about we send the dog to the trainer, we expect it to be fixed. Well, that's, that's really one-sided and yeah. really unfair. How many parents send their kids to a human specialist? And they're like, all right, fucking fix my kid yep. so I don't have to raise them. Cause we don't teach, we don't do dog training. We teach you how to raise your dog as a parent. You raise them. You don't take, like, when do you put your training hat on? They're never not learning. It's true. You have so to, so if you're, if you're engaging yelling at role, someone yeah. on the phone, yeah. If you're psycho yelling at someone on the phone, they're observing that and going, Whoa, like dad's angry. That's unstable. They're learning all the time. So when do you train? So when you do have kind of like that more erratic behavior at home, does that then, do they feed off of that and then kind of play off of that energy and that's where they get more amped and aggressive Fully. themselves? Interesting. Absolutely. Fully. Yeah. It's no coincidence that our most anxious clients bring me the most anxious dog. <laughs> our most fearful clients bring me the most fearful dogs. Our most uh, tense, tight, I would call like the road ragers. Yeah they bring us fearful, aggressive dogs. So dogs that are like this, but will bite, right? Because they're surrounded by that energy all the time. And they're learning how to get through the world through with that energy being always around them. And so they learn to get through world like this. Yeah, You see what I'm saying? Or the anxiety, they feed off the human's anxiety. They become anxious while they're anxious. The human's petting them because it makes the human feel better, but they're nurturing this state. So do you think that it's healthy that a lot of people have been adopting dogs during this past like isolation year of isolation? Like, is that a healthy, like, should you be getting a dog because you feel lonely or like, why should we like, what is the headspace in order to raise a healthy dog? It's been very healthy for my revenue. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, not a good reason to get a dog. Um, there's nothing wrong. I, I love that so many dogs have been adopted, obviously, mm -hmm. right? So many dogs have homes now that wouldn't have had homes if it weren't for um, the, the pandemic. So um, in one way, I'm very grateful for that. In another way, uh, you know, to answer your question, loneliness, anxiety, those are things that an animal is not capable of fixing. That is too much responsibility and pressure 
on a semi-domesticated predator who needs certain things in their life to be fulfilled and to be happy. Now, let me, before anyone gets upset, let me explain myself a little further. Um, anytime a client comes to me and says, we have a daughter or a son who's in high school and has anxiety, and we really want uh, to get a dog to be uh, uh, an emotional support animal. I say to them, fantastic. I would love to work with you. However, it is not going to be the way you think it is. This dog's job is not to make your kid's anxiety go away. This dog's job is not to be an emotional dumping ground for whatever's going on in your family. That's what human therapists are for, mm -hmm. right? That's what family and friends are for. But I can promise you, if I can teach your kid about dog psychology and we can make your kid responsible for this animal and I can teach your kid how to build a, a positive relationship, how to fulfill, how to lead, how to guide, how to take care of, what we're going to do is start to build confidence. Accomplishment breeds confidence. We start to build confidence in your kid and all of a sudden you have an emotional support animal, but it's the backwards way than what you thought. Your kid doesn't get to hold and dump emotions on the dog. Your kid has to take care of the dog. Mm. Accomplishment breeds confidence. So then all of a sudden the kid's confident and they're moving because they have to go walk the dog twice a day. Well, the biggest form of re energy release is motion, right? Get the kid moving. Anxiety drains off the kid. Dog is happy. Kid gains confidence. Now we have an emotional support animal. That's just opposite of what you thought. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's, yeah, I think if, if people took that approach with these dogs they got during quarantine, uh, we would have happy dogs, happy humans. But instead we sit around and sulk and we dump emotions on our pet. So pet becomes unhappy. Human already was unhappy. It doesn't fix anything. Interesting. I love it. This is so fascinating. I don't think we talk enough about dog, like the psychology of having, I mean, cause it's essentially like, I mean, not to compare pets to children, but I mean, that relationship of kind of parenting or, you know, taking care of something or someone else is very similar and you need to approach it in a conscious way. Fully, fully. Um, I was doing a speech this weekend to a group of dog owners and I said, you know, you're going to hear from a lot of dog trainers out there that the biggest problem with dog ownership today is that we humanize our dogs. Mm. A lot of dog trainers say that, and I call bullshit. Humanize them. Do it fully, fully humanize. So let me give you an example. I have a three-year-old son. He sleeps in a crib. That's a bed with bars around it, mm -hmm. right? in his own room. I tell him when he goes to bed, my wife tells him when he goes to bed, when he gets up, what he eats, when he eats it, what he watches, how long he watches it, where he goes, who he hangs out with, what he plays, when he plays, where he plays. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I control all of that. Why? Because I'm selfless, not selfish. I want him to have a balanced, happy life. It'd be way easier to just let him watch bubble guppies all day. Way easier. It'd be way easier to just leave food out on the table, stuff he likes, not the vegetables and fruits and the stuff we're making him eat, but the stuff he likes, the fruit roll-ups and whatever, right? That'd be way easier. But from a self, because I love him selflessly, I'm trying to give him life skills he needs to be a kind, balanced, happy, contributing member of society, right? So what if we did that with our dogs? Oh, by the way, he goes to school. He's in sports activities. He's getting mental stimulation, physical stimulate, right? So what if we do that with our dogs? We control where they sleep, when they sleep, what they eat, how much they eat, when they play, who they play with where they go, what they do. We put them in school, bevel dog behavior. <laughs> we put them in athletic, um, you know, uh, uh, activities so that they can fulfill the body. So if you want to humanize your dog, do it, but do it all the way and stop treating them like an infant and start treating them like a child. Cause infants dictate when they eat, when they sleep. Right. That, but that only lasts for a few weeks, a few months. 
then you have to actually parent. Mm -hmm. So parent your dog, do it, humanize them all the way. I love it. And if they need help, not just humanizing them, but you know, getting them need some tools and resources, they can always go to Bevel. Where can we learn more about Bevel and hit you up? Not slide into your DMs, but hire you, Brad. Where can we hire you? <laughs> yeah, so beveldogbehavior.com uh, is a wonderful resource. We actually just uh, launched a brand new website, and there's a section there called Learn. And that's where I'm putting all the free educational content, training tips. There's a whole blog series on dog behavior, dog psychology. Um, we're updating the content constantly. We're about to start a podcast of our own, which I would love to have you on sometime. Um, but uh, I think it's a, it's a wonderful resource. Obviously, following us on Instagram at Bevel Dog Behavior would be good. Um, and if you want to hire me, uh, all the options are on the website. I do fly outs. So like Bronwyn, I flew out to her to meet her family. And um, she actually, I would like to bring this up. So she's doing something amazing that I think every single family should do. Wait. She's hiring me to choose her dog so that we can make sure it's compatible for her family because she's got seven kids and a very unique lifestyle. Right. And so to just go out and purchase a dog because it looks cute on Facebook uh, is not a good way to buy a dog. So she's hiring me to choose a dog. So actually tonight I'm meeting three dogs um, all at once and I'm either going to adopt all three or two or one, whatever I think is a potential for her then we're going to train all of them that we adopt. And then I'm going to place one with Bronwyn and I'll place the other ones and other families. But this is the way to do it. It's like dating or real estate. You're going to buy a house without a realtor. Nope. No. You're going to date someone without knowing fully about them and making sure you're compatible. No, you don't just, well, I mean, I guess Tinder, you do just look <laughs> and swipe or whatever, swipe but left and right. you know, it's, it's not always like the best way to go yeah. about a relationship or buying a home or getting a dog. So I'm really proud of her and stoked that she gets that. And she reached out to a professional to help her find the right dog for her family. I love it. And I really want Bevel Dog Behavior to turn into a matchmaking service. So that's all I do is like, let's find you the right dog. I'll train it. And then boom, it's yours. And you never need me again. Oh, I want you to help me find the right dog. Let's do it. Let's do it. You're next. I'm next. All right. Brad Bevel of Bevel Dog Behavior. Everyone needs to go to Bevel Dog Behavior right now. BevelDogBehavior.com right now and follow at Bevel Dog Behavior. Brad, do you have anything else you want to plug before we, we close on out? I, I mean, I don't think so. I think uh, everyone needs to definitely watch Real Housewives of Dallas. Yes. We have season finale coming up, coming up at some point. I don't know how many weeks away we are, but there will be a really nice, I think, kind of surprise. You can see Cam and all her bossness uh, in the season finale in terms of her dog handling abilities. I'm, I'm super excited for that, that finale. So definitely watch that. Uh, otherwise, just, uh, you know, I don't know. Go to Bevel Dog Behavior, learn more about dog psychology so you can make your dog happier. I love it. Thank you so much, Brad. I really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Anytime. Thanks, Zach. Thanks, Brad. Uh, okay, you're going to want to go and follow Brad because he is just, uh, he's a delight, a delight on a Monday. It is, we're feeling the Monday blues. And yeah, he is a lot of fun to watch on Real House of the Dallas. I'm, I'm enjoying seeing Fancy's transition as she, you know, I feel like Fancy's like a new friend of on the Housewives this season. I'm still a little bummed that Tiffany Moon might not come back next season. I'm kind of hoping that she does, but I understand if she doesn't. But Dallas, we need, we need more Tiffany Moons and Cam Westcotts on the show. I'm a little over what's, I don't know, I'm a little over a couple of them, but I think Dallas needs, we need to breathe in some fresh air to Dallas because this was actually a good, I think Tiffany Moon really kind of stirred things up. She, she was the straw that stirred the cocktail and it was good. It's a good cocktail. Okay, so let's talk about, what should we start with? Let's start with All Stars. So with Real Housewives of, well, I guess all the franchises, um, the All Stars show, which is going to be like a vacation show, they're taking a, a, a bunch of housewives out on a vacation on a island. Uh, it some we've heard that it was prob probably going to be Mexico. They wanted somewhere warm and tropical, um, and so we are now seeing that Miss Lisa Rinna from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and Miss Sonia Morgan have both been spotted in Antigua. 
and they have been spotted, I believe, at the same resort or at least nearby, but they're in the same they're in the same premises. And we also have seen that Kelly Dodd, Melissa Gorga, and Kim Zolciak have also been spotted all together, but they've been spotted out in Vegas. So people are speculating that they all flew into Vegas and that they're all going to be flying to Antigua next. And they're going to be running into Lisa Rinna and Sonia Morgan so that we can tape this Real Housewives Vacation All-Star show for an entire week. Now, if you do, Sonia seems to be like, she looks like she's on some sort of like fun, wild vacation where she's just, you know, gallivanting all over the Caribbean. And then with Lisa Rinna, it looks like she's just kind of on a family vacation. I also am curious as to why, like, is it just a coincidence that they both happen to be there? Because, like, I would assume Bravo would be like, don't post about this. But I'm I'm thinking maybe Lisa Renna is posting about it because she's with her family. So she's kind of like, oh, well, it looks like I'm just on vacation and I'm not actually filming this Secret Housewives show, even though it's not really a secret anymore. So what do you think? Lisa Renna. Sonia Morgan, Kelly Dodd, Melissa Gorga, Kim Zolciak. Is that a fun cast? They said they what? They wanted about eight to ten. So Kelly, Melissa, Kim, Rinna, and Sonia. That's five. So six, seven, eight. So there are about three housewives missing from the mix. I actually think that might be, I mean, Kelly Dodd, Melissa Gorga, and Kim Zolciak alone just sound like that's a hot mess and a, a fun a fun weekend. And then you also have Sonia Morgan and Lisa Ryan. Like that sounds like a fun collective of housewives that if you're going to go on vacation, you're going to get drunk and you're probably going to have a little drama. That seems like the place that it would start. And you're obviously going to have Kelly Dodd or Kim Zolciak really kind of starting some sort of drama. Melissa's probably there to tame things. Sonia's there to be the lively drunk. Lisa Rinna's there to keep the fun and make everybody dance. I would assume that they would probably add in Kenya Moore to really ensure that there's some drama. And Kenya Moore's name has been thrown around. And then we also know Luann. So we have these five. We have Luann, who is also rumored to have signed, a, received and signed a contract. And then we have, I believe, they need someone from Atlanta. I believe that someone is going to be Kenya Moore. Um, and then that would leave maybe a couple of other outliers, but I think for the most part, this might actually be kind of fun. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. TBD. We'll see what happens with the Housewives All-Stars. If you are spot, if you spot any of the others in Antigua or on a beach or just in some sort of Caribbean sphere, let me know so we can keep up to date with what's going on with these Housewives. Kelly Dodd, I'm, interesting that Kelly Dodd's even a part of it, considering how much so many people hate Kelly Dodd. Um, but speaking of Kelly Dodd, Kelly Dodd has recently been calling out Lisa Vanderpump. So Lisa Vanderpump was doing her press for her show Overserved on E! The ratings are in, and it's not doing very well. It looks like the first episode brought in uh, just over 350,000 in ratings in, or in viewers, and then episode two got 169, which is a big dip. It's like over 180,000 decreased in viewers. So it showed that, I mean, it, it was, like I said, it was cute. It seemed kind of fun. I assumed that they would be, she'd be finding her footing, I think this is a natural progression for her and for her career, whether or not the show will take off. You can't really base numbers off of the first kind of couple of weeks because that's where you're trying to find your audience. That's where you're going to have a really high first week and possibly a high second week and where ratings start to dip in, two in, in episodes two and three because that's when, you know, some fall off and then others trickle in and you don't really know what the show is going to be until you're after the first season. And usually, I mean, like Chelsea lately wasn't a big ratings hit right out the gate and yet that was E's biggest talk show. But it took a while for that to kind of really, first it was the Chelsea Handler show and then they rebranded it and turned it turned it into Chelsea lately and it just sometimes these shows take a minute I have a little faith in this being Lisa Vanderpump's forum and this being kind of her her space her space but like we'll we'll see what happens but anyway she was doing press for Overserved, which is on E and she was asked who what um housewives have been banned from her restaurants and she said Kelly Dodd well first said oh the the one from OC darling and then someone was like Kelly Dodd and then she was like oh yes 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 and so apparently she says that Kelly Dodd came into her restaurant was a nightmare to work with for the staff and that she didn't want to pay her tab 
Kelly Dodd said, hold up, wait a minute, clap back. It came up on Twitter and he's like, Lisa Vanderbilt, first of all, your food sucks, your restaurant sucks, the staff sucks, sucks, and hold up, I got a receipt because I actually went, I actually paid. I went with Vicky Gunvalson from Real Housewives of OC. She's like, I went with Vicky. And when I went with Vicky, her crew is the one that didn't want to pay. I just had to pay a 500 and something dollar tab at the Abbey. Then we went over to your restaurant. I believe it was Pump. Then we went over to Pump. Or was it Pump? No, it may have been Sir. Um, because it, this happened, she said it happened about six years ago. And she showed up with the actual receipt showing that she paid and left a nice tip. And she said that she made sure she wanted the bill to be split because she she just got forked with the bill over at the Abbey and it was like a five hundred and something hundred dollar bill a uh, hundred yeah and Vicky and her friends just expected that like she would pay for stuff and they were just like a nightmare to go out with so when they ended up at LVP spot Kelly Dodd was like I need to make sure that we split the bill and so she told the wait staff hey, can we make sure we split the bill because I don't want to be paying for these bitches. And then, you know, Kelly Dodd ended up uh, getting ripped apart. I guess one of the um, one of the servers ended up saying that like Kelly Dodd was a nightmare and didn't want to pay. But she's like, no, I actually did pay. And here's the proof. And apparently this was like a story back in the day, like back, I believe it happened in like 2016. Um, and it was apparently the, a story that was circulating and someone DM'd Kelly and is like, is this true? And Kelly's like, no, it's not true. And that's why she had a copy, a photo of the receipt from so long ago, because she apparently got it all cleared up back then. And then Lisa Vanderpump came out and she's like, oh, darling, I'm so sorry. We'll host you anytime, dear. And now apparently Kelly Dodd is going to be, you know, turning it up at pump or sir, whichever one is still open at this point. Poor LVP. She had a really rough time. Like, I don't, it was a little, oh, I, Kelly did throw a little shade. She's like, Lisa Panderpump, you need to, you need to apologize for me. No wonder Villa Blanca went under. The service is horrible. Your waiter was like attacking me on Twitter and your food sucks, which was a little harsh. Like <laughs> their food isn't amazing. If she was talking about Sir, which I believe she was, um, I can't remember if it, if it was Sir or Pump. I will say Pump has better food than Sir does. Sir's, eh. Sir is a little overhyped, I'll be honest. Pump was the best of the... Oh, actually, no, I'm lying. Tom Tom was the best of the option. They had some really good fries and some really great cocktails. Like, if you're going to go to any of them, I would definitely recommend going to Tom Tom. Maybe start with, like, a drink at Sir or a drink at Pump. I would say you could skip Sir altogether unless you want to, like, see Raquel. But, like, who's really going there for a selfie with Raquel, TBH? But that's my recommendation if you're ever in LA and you want to hit up the bar scene. Wow, I'm looking at myself on camera right now and I have some insane flyaways. It's mostly because of the bleach and the breakage and the things and the hair. Blonde problems, you guys. Blonde problems. All right, now I got some tea on Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. We are getting a trailer very, 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 very soon. Like I'm talking post-Easter like the week after Easter soon is is what I'm hearing from people close to production that there is a trailer. It is, you know, in the final touches and it is about to be dropped probably the week after Easter. And the season is probably going to be coming in. So it looks like last year, the there was a four week gap in between the drop of trailers for New York and Beverly Hills. And then there was a two week gap in between the premieres. So I believe there's probably still going to be a two week gap in between the premieres. And we're probably going to get a premiere. I would assume mid to late May is when the new season of Real Housewives of Beverly Hills will be premiering. I think it's possible at the absolute latest we'll get it the first week of June um, but I actually think we're going to be getting it closer to New York and it's going to be in the mid to late May range and the trailer is going to be dropping like I said probably you know like a, a little a little um, gift in your Easter basket so obviously it's not gonna be dropping on Easter but in the days coming after Easter is when we can expect a very, uh, a very juicy telling trailer because production is done. They filmed all their confessional or most of their confessionals for at least what they need for a trailer. So stay tuned for that. But also, I hear that Sutton is really shaking new ground this season. Not only is she pushing the Erica, you know, drama 
and storyline, which, by the way, I have Emily D. Baker, who's going to be on the show this Wednesday. You're not going to want to miss that. It's a follow up to my interview with Ronald Richards. And we dive into like, you know, Erica's fi- recent filing, trying to get that 600,000 in um in exemptions for from the ho- the sale of the house to the Rui Gomez family. So stay tuned. It's good. It's a good episode that I have with Emily D. Baker on Wednesday. But back to Beverly Hills. It seems like it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be a juicy season. And Sutton, I'm predicting, has possibly earned herself a diamond from what I've heard she's accomplished this season. So that is my insider scoop. I predict that there that Crystal Minkoff won't be the only new diamond holder this season. That Sutton may have actually earned herself the spot. I think she has. I think she earned it last season. And from what I'm hearing about her this season, she's really, you know, hitting the ground hard. There I hear there may be a little tension with the newbie with her and and Crystal Minkoff. Um, and then obviously we have Kathy Hilton who's going to be a friend of, but I think, you know, Sutton is definitely not just with the Erica Jane stuff, but she's really holding her ground this season and I'm happy to see it and I'm happy, well, not see it, but I'm happy to hear it. So stay tuned. It looks like it's going to be a really good season of The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. And that, and that is all I have to say. That is my tea for this week. Thank you guys for listening to Hashtag No Filter with Zach Peter. Thank you, Brad Bevel, for chatting with me. If you need your dog trained or you need help finding a dog, he's like the doggy matchmaker. So be sure to check him out. Uh, Bevel Dog Behavior. I have Emily D. Baker on the show this Wednesday. Follow-up interview from my episode last week with Ronald Richards. So stay tuned for that because that's going to be good. Emily is really, she she's breaking down all of the current cases. So not just past victims of Tom Girardi's, but like the current clients that he has that are still looking for to even settle their cases or to get their payments. We talk about the divorce. We talk about Erica. We talk about that 600000 that she's asking for. Ask her to explain it all for me. So it's going to be good. It's going to be juicy. Get ready. Uh, hashtag no filter with Zach Peters. Just, you know, we're here. We're here to stay every Monday and every Wednesday. Please leave me a five-star review. I will shout you out on the show for those reviews. So thank you, thank you, thank you. If you follow at youtube.com slash JustPlainZach, thank you for subscribing over there. Don't forget to hit that little notification button so you know when the latest tea is being spilled and leave some comments and I'll give you guys some shout outs. Follow me at JustPlainZach. Follow at NoFilterWithZach. Stay tuned for our live Thursday night and I will talk to you Wednesday. Bye.